brothers and sisters today, we also in a way with this parable commemorated since Cain and Abel. Because today this parable reminds us of why Cain's sacrifice was rejected and why Abel's sacrifice was accepted. Because Abel offered from a pure heart, he offered sincerely, he offered it humbly, and he offered with love. Cain offered only because it was a law, and he was simply fulfilling a law. And that should also inform us how vain it is that we try to live a godly life simply by obeying a law. The commandments of Jesus Christ were given not as law, but as commandments. But they were totally different from the law itself. In the parable today, Jesus Christ is in, in, uh, called upon all of us to think seriously, particularly about this Lent, the Great Lent, the Great Past, and preparing for Holy Pascha. Too often now we hear even priests, not just sectarian preachers, but even some priests, preaching some kind of malice or hatred toward somebody, toward someone. It's called culture wars. We know that we have to choose certain people that we don't want to fellowship with or that we don't want our children to be involved with, not out of condemnation, but out of, of care and prudence for our own lives and our own children's lives. But we can't say that we do it because we hate somebody else. I've heard this so many times. I know when I was uh, traveling in the South one time, somebody said, there's nothing I hate worse than, well, they said a pejorative for black people. And I asked him, why do you hate anyone? You know, it's, it's the fact that when we, we hate most in others, what we fear most in ourselves. So if you want to know what's going on in your own soul, assess the people you hate. And you'll know what you yourself are inside, in your own heart. Because it's not possible to hate without fear. Fear is the mother of hate, and hate is the mother of murder. So we have to think that when we hate somebody, mentally, emotionally, we're on the verge of murder. So we have to think carefully, especially in Lent. We can say, I thank you, O oh God, that I'm not like those readers, you know, that I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm perfect, I'm not a sinner. Uh, I thank you, O oh God, that I'm not like those Romanians, <laughs> who are all sinners. But I'm a Serb, so we're not sinners. Serbs never do anything wrong. But, uh, I, I, you know, we can all say all this, I thank you, O oh God, that I'm not the color of that person. Because their color is the color of evil or something. I thank you, O oh Lord, that I'm not like the street person. I thank you, O oh Lord, that I'm not like this person or that person or this kind of person. When we just got through praying that in the prayers before, the, in the prayers for communion, that I'm the chief of sinners. Did we mean it or didn't we? It's really boasting a little bit because Apostle Paul has already claimed that territory for himself. Sinners of whom I'm the chief, the Apostle said. The great Apostle and mouthpiece of Jesus Christ, the mouthpiece of the Gospel, who took the Gospel to, to the whole world, who embraced everyone in his own heart, even languages that were not yet spoken and nations that did not yet exist, and yet he could say, I'm the chief of sinners. So brothers and sisters, let's not hear anyone in this congregation or anyone in this Salea preaching that you should hate or despise anyone, because the person you hate is somebody that Christ loved and gave his life for. The person you despise is someone that Christ shed his precious blood for. 
the person that you judge and condemn, someone that Christ was nailed to the cross on behalf of. Is it possible to hate somebody whom your master loves? Today, we see and understand the whole mystery of the story of Cain and Abel. Let's not even keep the past just because of the law. Let's keep the past with some sense of acquiring some spiritual gain for ourselves, some spiritual lift. Let's keep the past out of love for Jesus Christ, out of love for God, and out of love for our neighbor as well. But if we can't keep the past purely and from love, if we keep it only because it's a law, it's the same as if we have not fasted at all. Just as Cain offered a sacrifice and it was the same as if he had never offered any sacrifice at all. Or the publican in today's parable offered a prayer and it was as if he'd never offered any prayer at all. So let's keep the fast out of love, out of dedication. And again, we want to remind you again, out of self-control. Because if we can't, we have to learn to control ourselves. And that's part of our spiritual struggle, is controlling ourselves, controlling our minds, controlling our own thoughts, and not having our emotions control us, but trying to control our emotions. And above all, if you feel hatred or malice toward anyone, in these days before the past, pray fervently that God will relieve you of that hatred and that malice and that condemnation and lift you up so that you can stand before the altar and sincerely pray, God forgive me. You can't, Jesus Christ has told us time and again, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. If you cover your brother's sins, God will cover your sins on the day of judgment. If you expose your brother's sins, your sins will be exposed tenfold on the day of judgment. So it's better to cover our brother's sins and not, not to judge them or look at them. To avoid whom we need to avoid because we'll fall into sin by judging them if we, if we fellowship with them. But let's do it so that we don't fall into sin ourselves. One act of judgment or condemnation on your part can erase a whole year of prayers and fasting and repentance. One time to judge another person or condemn another person can erase your whole prayer life and you have to start again from scratch. So that's what I was wanted to leave with you today. That the Great Lent is not simply fasting from food, as you know, as you very well know. We read this parable today and next Sunday the parable of the prodigal son, the merciful father. The parable of the merciful father. The parable is not about the son, the, parable, the story is about the father. The son is, the two sons are incidental. Okay. They're, uh, again, a reminder of Cain and Abel. The Cain who could have come back to the Father, who could have come back and repented before God, but didn't. And uh, so it's sort of an antidote to Cain and Abel. Brothers and sisters, let us continue this voyage toward Great Lent. And as the prophet says, let the four fasts of the year be joy and gladness to Israel. So let's approach this fast, not as a period of suffering and mourning, but with joy and gladness for the spiritual gift that we get from keeping the fast, for the spiritual benefits that come to us through keeping the fast, and uh, through the greater understanding of Pascha itself for those who have kept the fast. Amen. Amen. I'm glad to see